This is an instructional video on HydroTest Products proof test record software being used as a standalone product. To load the software onto your Windows based computer, simply insert the supplied USB device into an open USB port on your computer. Locate the install icon proof tester and double click to start the installation. A window will appear asking you to click next or cancel. Click next. An end user license agreement will appear. To accept, click on the box and then click next. A default destination folder will appear. You can change the de destination if desired we do suggest that you keep the default, then click Next. Click the Install icon to begin the automatic installation of the software. A status bar will appear showing the status of the installation. You can now click the Finish and at the same time optionally open the software. Locate the icon labeled Proof Tester on your hard drive or desktop. To start the program, simply double click the icon. The test record form will then open. As with any Windows based program, the actual window can be sized to fit your screen. There are four navigation menus File, Test, Controller, and help. There are also four form menus, test, verification, data log, and diagnostics. When using this program in the standalone mode, the controller, data log, diagnostic menus are not used. When first using the software, there are some options that must first be configured. Go to Files, Options, a setting screen will be shown. Highlight the first block and name your machine. It can be named anything that you like. Next, click in the company name box and complete the remaining information. This information will print on your daily test record forms, so make sure that it is correct and complete. A contact email can be entered for future product enhancements. An important step is to next go to the Configuration tab and be sure to uncheck the Enable Automated Mode feature. This feature is used only when operating an automated proof test station. The Controller tab is not used in the software in the standalone mode. Go back to the General tab and be sure that all the fields are filled in properly. A Factory Reset button is available if needed. After confirming that the settings are correct, click on OK. To start recording tests, click on the File tab and the New Database tab. This step must be done at the start of every day. The default file name is the date and the time. 
You can change the file name to whatever you like. However, we do suggest the default to easily find data based on date if needed. For this exercise, I will change the name to Test Demo. Click on the Save button. Per DOT and TC requirements, we must verify the system accuracy prior to testing the cylinders for that day. Click on the Verification tab and then click on the Add Step tab. Enter an operator ID, which can be a name or initials. Enter the desired verification pressure on your master gauge and then enter the actual pressure of the working gauge and click on the Save Step button. You will notice that a record ID is assigned and a deviation percentage is calculated. The date and time stamp is shown along with the operator ID. To perform additional verification pressure points Always click on the Add Step button and simply type in the pressures and click on the Save Step button. For each step, the data is calculated, the deviation is shown, along with the date and time stamp, and the operator's initials. Be sure to pick appropriate pressure points per the regulations of DOT, TC, or the authority having jurisdiction. An unlimited amount of steps can be performed in this verification mode. Now that the verification procedure is completed, we can start testing cylinders for that day. We click on the Test tab, and it brings up the test record form. The first block, you're going to put in the operator's ID. Initials are acceptable. The cylinder owner. the serial number of that particular cylinder, the manufacturer of the cylinder, the specification and service pressure, physical size of the cylinder, diameter by length, the retest period in years, and whether the cylinder passed or failed the visual inspection. In this case, we'll say that it passed. We then click down on the actual pressure tab and this is where we type in the actual pressure that we went to. In this scenario, we should have gone to a minimum of 390 PSI. We actually went to 400. We held the pressure and it passed. And we can put a note in here. And you can, this is all free form, you can type in whatever you desire. And in this case, we're going to say that this fire extinguisher needs a new label. Once you're done, we're going to hit Save Test. This brings all the data over to the left-hand side of the screen. And if we want to start a new test, we hit the New Test button. You'll notice that all the data is kept, except for the serial number, 
the actual pressure, and the test results. So in this case we'll type in a new serial number for this particular cylinder and all of the other information is the same and we'll put in a test pressure and this time we went exactly to 390 psi it passed the test again and again we can put in whatever notes we'd like for this particular cylinder we're going to say that this fire extinguisher is old and when we're done we can hit the save test button you can use your tab key to go from field to field or use your mouse to click in a specific field there are a variety of print functions available with the software to print a open test record simply go to the file print menu a standard Windows print box appears this is where you would pick your printer I'll cancel out of this for right now you also have the ability to just print the verification report if desired go to the file print verification tab and once again the printer dialog box will appear if you just want to print selected files for a day once the printer dialog box is open click on the selection option as shown and only those reports will be printed for that selection to pick multiple tests use your control key on your keyboard while selecting and only those selected reports will print if the selection button in the printer dialog box is checked there's also a history screen available this history screen automatically records every test that is saved to get to this screen select the test menu history tab the history screen has a variety of filters available to select go to the filter drop down box and pick a value you can also put in your own filter dates if desired the history screen can also be printed by selecting the print tab and again you have the option of just printing the selected files or all files you can also sort the screen by any column on the header by simply clicking on the header tab this is an easy way to find a particular customer or cylinder this is an extremely useful tool during an audit or if you just want to find a particular cylinder for a particular customer the standard windows format allows you to select multiple files you can then copy them using the keyboard shortcut control C and paste them into other software with keyboard shortcut control V if desired the history screen is a powerful sorting and printing function that can be used by itself or exported to other software if needed as with any software it is imperative that a proper backup protocol be used if you will not be backing up your records then we strongly suggest that they be printed out at the end of every day that testing was performed the files that need to be backed up are .sdf files they are kept under program data hydro test proof tester folder unless that default was changed during the setup on a daily basis drill down to the 
proof tester folder. Inside the test data files are all of the saved test record forms. The easiest way to back it up is to select the entire test data file folder. Then right click and copy the folder. Bring up your backup disk and in this case I've made a, up a folder called proof test record backup and I've placed it on the same USB device that contains the install software. Right click and copy the data. There are a variety of backup options available Please consult with your IT person to determine what works best for your company.